Welcome back, this is Master Spence. I am back with my, my first hurricane video in a while, or after a couple of movie reviews. Um, this is going to be about the upcoming Junior Day on the 20th of February, which I believe is tomorrow. It is tomorrow. Time flies, doesn't it? This month's almost over. But uh, basically, I'm just going to be going through some of the visitors we should be keeping an eye on. Uh, some some of it's going to be having to do with who Miami is targeting. So I'm going to also give my own opinions on who we should be looking out for. So without further ado, let's get right into it. This is Mark Rick's first junior day as uh, the head coach of Miami. Uh, with the previous staff, usually it did take place in January, but because obviously the staff came in mostly in December, some in January. Sorry about the hair, guys. But uh, it's obviously reasonable that they pushed it to February to focus on signing day. So to start out with, I'm going to start out with some names that Miami seems to be high on. And I'm going to go back through and then give some names that I think we should look out for. First to start out with is a wide receiver out of Carroll City. Uh, he is a three-star guy. Uh, but then again, spring evaluation is the main evaluation period where everyone gets their rises or drops in the new standings that would come out or rankings. He is rated three stars, like I said, but the staff seems to really like his size. He's about 6'1", 6'2", about 190, which is actually the size that, uh, believe it or not, Amon Richards wants to come in at. He is 6'2", right now, obviously. He's almost 6'3". And he's probably about 180, 185 at the most, and he wants to come in at 190. So the size is good. He already has the size of a of a pro typical college receiver. Um, and he, we were his first offer. The old staff was the one that offered him. The new staff, when Mark Rick came in, they've been high on him. They've keep him con kept in contact. And right now we're the front runners for Mr. Dingle. Uh, other than that, there is another wide receiver out of Georgia, Sean Smith, who uh, actually only landed an offer about a month ago, but um, his interest in us has risen very quickly since he's gotten that offer. Um, he has named us as a front runner a few days ago, uh, courtesy of 247 Sports. I have renewed my subscription to them, so I will get more insider information. Um, as well as just the normal state of the U that I use, as well as some King Insight. Um, he is 36 at his position, uh, a wide receiver. And besides us, the main competition come from Kentucky, Duke, West Virginia, and Georgia. Um, other than that, we move on to the O-line. But, uh, these two O-linemen, uh, I'll, I'll just say their names first. K. Leon Herbert, or Herbe, I don't know exactly how to say that one. And to Daryl Slayton. They both go to American Heritage and Plantation. They're both, I would, Slayton's more definitely a prototypical left or right tackle. I haven't seen his uh, arm length. So, uh, it depend, that's usually the major difference between a left and right tackle is the length of their arms. Usually the shorter arms will be on the right side, longer arms will be on the left. Um, however, with Slayton, or no, not with Slayton, with Herbert, that's what I'm just going to say. If it is Herbay, let me know, guys, but I believe it's Herbert. He was most likely to uh, have Florida as his front runner recently um, when they offered him July, but he's been very quiet. He grew up a Miami fan, so not much is known about his interests. Uh, LSU, Michigan, and Tennessee have also been programs of interest that would be out of state. Now with Slayton, who's ranked higher as a four-star guy, eighth at his position, 10th overall in Florida, he has been a national recruit since he started as a freshman on the state championship team. I believe that would have been the team that had Gibson. Uh, if you guys don't remember Gibson, he was a quarterback recruit who actually plays wide receiver now for Ohio State. And we recruited him, I believe as a quarterback, uh, 
but I'm not 100% sure on that. He might have been recruited as a wide receiver. I'm not sure. Um, but Michigan is presumed to be the leader. Uh, however, because he is a national recruit and uh, he's done very little recruiting travel in terms of visits and stuff like that, uh, I wouldn't expect him to rush the process. He'll probably be one of those guys that commits either at the end of his senior year or uh, with a few months to go before signing day, if not on signing day. So I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. The next one is another four-star guy on the defensive defensive line instead of offensive line. He's actually ranked as the second uh, best defensive end at his position and sixth overall in the state of Florida. And uh, his cousin right now is actually a part of the UM signing class, uh, one of the early enrollees, Pat Bethel, who is on campus right now, as I said, and uh, he definitely is very athletic. He reminds me of, I haven't really seen much of his tape, but the way he's described, he reminds me of a lot of what uh, Joseph Jackson was uh, was said about Joseph Jackson before he became a uh, national name, I guess you could say. Uh, very, a lot of similarities. They were both, they're both very athletic. Um, Jackson might have been more raw than uh, Parks. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, once again, I haven't seen his uh, tape yet. Once I do, I will let you guys know my personal opinion. And uh, if you guys have watched his tape, let me know what you guys think. I'm always interested to hear what my uh, listeners uh, think of these guys. Um, another guy that has actually not been on a radar until last week. We just offered him last week, actually. His name is James Houston. He's a linebacker out of American Heritage and Plantation as well, as long as uh, with those two offensive linemen that we were just talking about. Um, like I said, we just offered him last week. And uh, obviously, Mike Rump, it was his former head coach at American Heritage, and Mike Rump was the one that offered him. So that might uh, give us an advantage because obviously having your old head coach off of you could definitely uh, give you the feels in terms of, uh, I don't know, just it could obviously play make a difference. Um, but other than that, uh, we do have a lot of commits that have already been committed to us showing up. So uh, I definitely, those aren't as... A big deal, obviously, because they're already committed. Um, but I mean, obviously, we there's always the chance that new commits will come in on the junior day. Um, and just so you guys know, this junior day is no football activities. It's literally just to see the campus and get to talk to one another. Um, so let's go to the next player, who you um, seems to be very high on. Um, uh, this is actually a nationally recruited linebacker out of IMG Academy in Bradenton. He is uh, ranked four stars. Uh, his name is Santino March Marchio, I want to say. I apologize if I butchered his name. Um, he's originally from Colorado. He transferred to IMG either this year or the past year. He uh, seems to be one that will be favoring academics. So that would play into us, uh, maybe Stanford, you know, all those uh, premier academic schools who, I don't know how big of a deal it is to have a good uh, football program as well for them, but I'd assume both are on an even playing field. So definitely Stanford, Miami, those two are the ones that pop into mind at first. Um, possibly like LSU or uh, maybe Michigan or Ohio State even. Uh, those are all programs that I that come into mind when I think of football and academics. So uh, moving on, we probably have <laughs> what people, a lot of people have been saying should be our number one uh, target at linebacker, James Wilder out of Carroll City, uh, or DeAndre Wilder, I'm sorry. I believe James Wilder is the running back up at Florida State. Um, but DeAndre Wilder, like I said, goes to Carroll City. He is four stars. He has probably been the number one target for Miami uh, at linebacker this whole entire recruiting uh, cycle. And actually, probably from the last uh, regime as well with Al Golden. 
but uh, they were one of the first ones to offer him. Uh, they're a serious contender, and they've actually he's actually uh, said he, we've been his leader a few times, but he's also said that uh, other teams have been the leaders at times. Uh, it seems like Alabama is going to be the main competition for him, but as well as I, w I wouldn't be surprised if other SEC schools came into the mix as well. Um, let me take a look. That's it for the ones we seem to be high on. Now I'm going to go and take you guys through ones that Miami would like to get, but it doesn't seem like the prospect has mutual interest or as much mutual interest as we would like. Uh, starting, I'm going to go back up to the top and just start from the top because there was one uh, at the top here. Actually, nope. I forgot I talked about him. Alright, going back down. Going to start with Cyrus Fagan. He's a defensive back out of Daytona Beach Mainland, where it was actually, what was his name? The offensive tackle, offensive lineman that we were trying to get uh, at the end of the cycle. Marcus Tatum. Uh, he went to Mainland as well. Um, so, obviously, that didn't work out last time. We'll see how it works out this time. He has four stars, second in his position, so he's a highly ranked guy. And, I mean, obviously, new valuation has just started for some of these guys, but uh, we'll see where he ends up at the end of the day. And, obviously, my main criteria for evaluating these players is my own eyes. So, once I get a look at a lot of these guys' tapes, that'll also help me gain my own opinion on these guys. Um, apparently, he's been long pegged as a Florida State guy via 247 Sports. A lot, all this information is from 247 Sports guys, so... Um, I, I want to give a big credit to them because without this, I wouldn't be knowing a lot of this stuff. So, and obviously this is for your educational purposes. So, like I said, he's been a Florida State lean, but uh, competi competition is stiff. Um, the high school he goes to, which is Daytona Beach Mainland, sends schools, sends players to schools all over the country. So, um, pretty much any, every school is trying to get. Uh, Jockeying for, for, for the, the, the rewind for position for uh, this talented defensive back, um, and this it does say this will be his first chance to visit Miami. So we'll see how this uh, goes in his eyes. Hopefully, it'll get us up there because we all know defensive back is a main position of need for us with Corn Elder uh, coming back and. He's like our only experienced cornerback coming back at this time, besides uh, ones that have just played on special teams and briefly on the field, like Redwine, Mays might have played a couple snaps last year, but uh, we'll find out what happens with him after this visit. Another one that I'm really excited to see what happens is Daniel Wright. He is either, I think he's the younger brother of Major Wright, who went to Florida. Uh, he's related to Major Wright, yeah. I think he's his brother, but I'm not 100% sure. He is four stars, six at his position, so another really high-ranked guy. I believe Wright's more of a safety than a corner. I'm not sure about Fagan. I haven't really seen a lot of his highlights, like a lot of these people, but Wright, I have seen some. Um, he's one of those guys that, because of his name, I feel gets a lot of attention, but he was very talented as well. Um, and I'm not saying he doesn't deserve the four-star rate ranking, don't get me wrong. I think he's very talented. I think he deserves that. But I think the name does help. He was one of our earliest targets in this class. Um, but like this says, apparently there was no, uh, uh, maybe it was the old staff. We're not 100% sure, or they're not 100% sure. But there was something missing on how he viewed us. He didn't really have the enthusiasm that a normal kid would have if uh, they were thinking about going to UM. So not a lot of people thought he was really giving us a shot, but hopefully him showing up to the junior day means that he's willing to hear the new staff out. Um, and apparently Florida State and LSU are the expected leaders at this point. Um, other notable attendees, uh, I'm just going to go through and name the commits and then go through other ones that I've heard of, possibly, that we could be hearing stuff about in the near future. 
Pentavious Thompson, who goes to Southridge. He's a running back. He's a Miami commit right now. Probably the most prestigious Miami commit uh, on the offensive line, that is, right now, is Navon Donaldson. He's out of Miami Central. He's been committed for a while, I believe, almost over a year. Um, there is a Florida commit coming, Kadeem Telfer, uh, out of Norland, an offensive lineman. And God knows we need more offensive linemen, so I'm going to take a look at him, actually. He's catching my eye, so I'm going to take a look at him, and uh, hopefully he pops out. And hopefully we can flip him early, or if not, stay in there until the very end, hopefully. Um... There is a Florida State commit coming as well, Sandal Wood linebacker Bradley Jennings. But I think we're only going to be taking one linebacker in this class because of the three early enrollees we got. And I think even though we have Wayman Steed coming also who's committed to us, I honestly think Wayman Steed might not even be in this class even though he's come into this. I think uh, Wilder, if we can get on him and get him to commit, I think Steed's out of this class. Um, if not, I do think Steed is an underrated guy who, um, I haven't seen a lot of his highlights, but from the one I have seen, I do think it, he is a sideline to sideline guy, which is what these guys are looking for now, which is why Tyler Dunning probably isn't going to be in this class anymore. He's played defensive line, um, at St. Thomas since he's been on varsity, so he is being recruited as a linebacker, Dunning is, but, uh, that's why we've cut off communication apparently with Dunning, because, they don't see him as a 4-3 linebacker running sideline to sideline. Um, so that leaves us with the one re one recruit, in my mind, one commit left in Wayman Steed, even though it does say Dunning is still committed. Um, Nick Roberts, who's out of Oak Leaf, where, is, uh, where Shaq Quarterman goes right now, or when, because he's actually on campus now. Um, so that'll be interesting to see if we keep up with his commitment, because uh, I don't... I haven't really seen a lot of his uh, highlights, but from what I've heard, he might not be Miami material necessarily. So once I get a look at him, I'll uh, see what pops out about him to me. All right, and then I'm going to come up with some guys who uh, are not attending and uh, just why they're not attending and why it either hurts or doesn't hurt us. Um, and only going to talk about it with the athletes or recruits that I would like to know more about. Uh, starting with Timor Campbell, Gamble, he's out of Southridge, he's tight end, he is committed to us right now, doesn't have a reason for why he's not coming, so usually if it doesn't have a reason, usually it's a personal reason. Um, St. Thomas Aquinas linebacker Tyler Dunning, who I just talked about, is not going to be going, he is still listed as a Miami commit. Sean Davis, Southridge cornerback, probably one of, after uh, the last two people from Southridge committed, uh, McWilliams, Christopher McWilliams, I believe, and uh, Gibson, Gibson, I forgot his first name, but uh, Gibson was a safety who goes to um, Southridge, he's a three-star guy, lower rated guy, I've seen some of his highlights. Nothing really pops off the, the video for me necessarily, so it'll be interesting to see if he stays in this class as well, in my opinion. But uh, he's also not attending, but I think he and Christopher Henderson, I'm sorry, not Mike Williams, Henderson, is uh, main focal points for getting Sean Davis to commit to us. And the reason Sean Davis isn't coming is because it's 7-on-7. Seven seven. Same with Columbus cornerback Christopher Henderson. Um, he is not coming because of 7-on-7 seven seven tournament. He is also a Miami commit. Marco Wilson, if I'm not mistaken, he's one of the guys we're, that hot, is high on us. But I think he's one of – this new coaching staff, one thing I've learned about this new coaching staff is they love not just big receivers but big corners. They want big a big secondary to go up those big wide receivers that are popular in today's game. So that's what I've noticed about them, uh, and it's going to be interesting to see if they go after those more talented, like corn elder type corners who are smaller, but really athletic, almost like a Brent Grimes type of player. Um, so I believe that's the profile, Marco Wilson, smaller but feisty corner who could be, who could shine in the right system, um, and I think speed systems are usually the best type of systems for those because they're usually playing at top speed, 
top speed, which helps them out and doesn't help out any of the other players. Um, that's it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know who you guys are most excited to see in this junior day. Let me know if you guys were even aware there was a junior day tomorrow. Um, but I was going to do a welcome to the U video for the last three commits that we got. Uh, actually, I think I just remembered his name. I think his name's Billy Gibson and uh, Christopher Henderson and Dayal uh, Harris were the last three commits that we got. I was planning on doing one big welcome to the U video for them. Let me know if you guys even want that anymore. Um, eventually, I will do one on each one. Uh, if it comes to it, I'll do it before signing day because obviously you want to give some time for this class to take shape. Um, but that's it, guys. Again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, watch my other videos. Uh, I do videos on all Miami Hurricanes uh, topics. I do want to start doing it for the basketball team as well. So we'll see uh, if that comes about. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys for watching as well. Um, I'm out of here. Bye-bye.